We had a good scrimmage today, number seven, and uh, Saturday we had an opportunity to uh, scrimmage. And uh, during that time, it was uh, situations where we put the ball on the minus 20-yard line and we drove the football and just gave the offense and the defense a, t a chance to just run around and, and guys go make plays. And then we put the ball in the red zone, uh, even had some goal line plays, and then we went to uh, third down. But it was just a chance to just watch the football team and it was a chance for us to put it down and then just let them go play because we hadn't had an opportunity. You know, we go through practice and everything. We have it all boxed off. We have a situation where it's group work or just teamwork. But when you uh, put the ball down, you have a chance to just look at the uh, players and just find out who are really the players and, and how they're going to stand out. Uh, overall, very pleased with the way uh, Watson and Wickline called the plays on offense. And, and defensively, we're very aggressive. But the longer the scrimmage went, um, some of the guys uh, it, it went and then guys just quit competing, and that's what we can't have. And I always talk about we have to finish. And I uh, didn't see that there at the end where we needed to go finish out. But uh, it's good. It was number six, and we had a chance to get number seven. Still have a lot of work to uh, do. And we have a chance to go just finish it out the right way. And I told our players today, we just, we're not good enough to go waste practices. That's not who we are, and that's not what we're all about. So is, uh, we get a chance to go back out there Thursday and get back to work. When I say quick competing, uh, as the scrimmage went, it's not so much a competition. It's all about when when you have a chance to go make plays, go make plays. And um, you know, when the ball is thrown, I expect the receivers to make the catch. Don't drop the ball. I don't expect us to turn the ball over in the red zone. And I expect <coughs> defensive players to go make tackles. Coach, who's, who, are, who are some of the examples of players you would say are distinctly on the other side of the coin? I mean, guys who never. Well, it's not so much they quit. I mean, uh, let me rephrase that. I mean, not guys quit. It's all about competing. And then uh, when you talk about guys that did not, uh, just overall on, on defense, uh, some of the guys that uh, had a good day is, is that uh, you look at Malcolm uh, had a really good uh, day. Tank had a good uh, day inside of two inside guys. You know, we were really strong up the middle with Edmonds behind them. And then uh, Josh Turner doing a really good job at free safety. You know, at uh, defensive back, uh, you look at uh, Duke. Duke played very well, and uh, you know we um, offensively uh, just in there, just uh, thinking with our offensive line. Espinosa is, is doing a really good job. Both of the quarterbacks were able to go compete, and then you look at running back Malcolm Brown is is a is a really solid player. And uh, I told our defense, you know, at times they didn't want to tackle him because of the way he run. He does a great job of just running behind his pads. And, and, he, and he's a punch and runner. When he hit, you know, he's always falling forward. Are there other guys that, uh, that did not practice as well, that, that scrimmaged better, or do you know what's for that? No, because, uh, you know, I expect the same thing in practice that I expect in a scrimmage. So if a guy's going to hit, well, you always say this, you, how you practice the way you're going to play. So when you get in a situation, you expect guys to go compete and go play. So it's natural that guys under one coach may feel like they're not getting a fair shake and then a new regime comes in. Are there guys who feel like they got a fresh start because you're looking at them fresh? And do you kind of sense that from some of these guys that they're able to prove themselves over again? Well, uh, that's what you expect from the full team, though. I mean, I, I don't know uh, what guys felt like they needed a fresh start, but they all need a new start, especially when you have a new coach and you have uh, different personalities, and, and we got to find out who the players are. So it, it, everyone starts with uh, everything's new for them, and we expect them to go out and, uh, and uh, you know, do everything we ask them to do. What's, uh, what's Beck showing you, linebacker Tampa? I'm sorry? Beck, uh, Beck, Beck is uh, still learning, and you know we expect that from a freshman. Uh, he's uh, had a chance now to, you know, get into spring practice. What's great for him, he was an early enrollee, but uh, he still has, uh, you know, he's still just learning the system, still learning how to go play. How big is he? Uh, Beck probably is uh, probably six two, six three, uh, probably right, right around two forty. Well, you look at it, it's going to be very multiple on defense. You're going to play 4-3, you'll get in a 3-4, because when we get in uh, some of our uh, third down 
package is, is going to be a three down lineman with, you know, three, four with four backers. And then offensively, uh, we're very multiple. So you, you have to be multiple. It's, it's not like you can just walk out and say, we're going to be a four, three team. And uh, with what we have, uh, our guys are versatile enough where they can pl play any defense or any offensive scheme that we put them into. Well, Mikael uh, Thompson was, is uh, the safety, so Mikael is doing a, a really good job. And uh, think about it, he's a starter last year. So you're looking at a guy that's a starter who's con uh, is getting better each and every practice. Talk a little bit about Kent Perkins and his injury and kind of what does that do with his position? Well, Kent uh, ha had a knee injury, and, and we expect him. He won't be back this spring, but he'll be ready to go in the fall. So at that position, you still have a Kennedy as a tackle, so which you're good. And Harrison's at the is a, at tackle, and uh, so it, it's you know you love to have him back because uh, you always want to see a guy come in the spring and 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 play well. So you know with us getting him back in at fall camp, it, it'd be great. Do you, do you feel like the depth is good enough at the, as it is at the tackle position? Yeah, because when you look at it, you, you always like to be better, and um, you try to find where you go in the, with seven or eight linemen. And right now, we're just still trying to put it all together. And, and with us uh, losing Perk, you know that does hurt us because it was he was doing so well up until you know he goes down with the injury. But you know, now it gives us a chance to uh, look at the young guys and uh, uh, with you know Darius James and watch them go uh, compete and uh, and uh, making sure that they get enough reps. <clears throat> Well, I don't know how much of a switch you need to flip, but you know he needs. Uh, we know, like I said earlier, with with every guy, it's it's all about us. Uh, them trying to, they're doing everything we ask them to do, and that's what he's doing right now. You said, several, a couple. you said several times you need to find out who the players are. How many players do you have right now? Well, I mean, we're number seven in practice, so it's still, I got, I still have some practices left where I'm gonna really know who they are. Do you, do you know? Do you see guys know that that, hey, that guy's a player? That guy's a player. Well, you're always going to have that because you have enough talent. But do you have a sense? You got to have a sense that you say, "Hey, we could be we're pretty good at home ground." You know, we're not. You know, hey, we got to get going. Now. Well, you know, you you expect to be good because of where you are, and we've recruited well enough here with the last staff where you have enough good players now. So as a coaching staff, to get them out there and, and find where they best uh, would fit our system and put them in that position. Charlie, a few talented guys on defense last year redshirted with. Well, all of them are getting reps right now. Uh, it's, and what, what, what happens is, um, you know, with everyone that got those guys, you know, with us being new, we're trying to uh, find out just how good they are and just put them in the right place. So with Nation Hughes, with uh, uh, Collins, with Davis, all those guys are getting reps and they're running, uh, you know, and getting enough reps in practice where they get put in position. And some of them are making plays. But they're still young, you know. Like you said, they're redshirt freshmen. So when you have redshirt freshmen, they make mistakes. But uh, it's all about us continuing to make sure that you know they are put out there and they put in position and they can do, do what we ask them to do. And but when you're young, you're gonna make mistakes because that's the first time you really lined up. So you know, and and the terminology is new to them with the system that we are implementing. You know, a lot of things are different from them. So it's uh, what we try to do and, and what we're doing is that you know. We're not just taking our whole system and just giving it, just giving it right to them. We kind of just each and every day give them something so that you can always find out, you know, what your concepts where you continue to build each and every day with your concepts. Where you know, one day it may be a cover three fire zone, the next day it may be a cover two fire zone, but they have to understand the big picture. Last, last year. Make it easier for a guy like a Nation Hughes or Shabosky Collins to maybe play a little bit earlier than they normally would because you can say, "Hey, you're really good at this one thing. We're going to go out and ask you to do this one thing on Saturdays before they have sort of the whole package as a football player." But what was different with us? I mean, when you think about a year ago, Lobo, those guys were had been in the program for years, so 
And so your rest or freshmen, those weren't, those weren't the guys who were in those situations. It was guys that had been there and so that you were trusted and they had enough uh, where they knew the system. So when we get to that point, we'll be able to rotate and put guys in position and put the whole puzzle together because it's still piece by piece and you're still trying to put it all together. So you're trying to find, like we talked about in situations, you're trying to find out like really exactly what player is going to better fit that uh, situation for you. Is anyone flashing? Well, you still have Edmonds, who's who's done an outstanding job for us. Uh, Tim Cole. Um, um, so you, you have guys that have played their left with Jenkins playing there, and uh, but but you have those guys in, in place for you. So when you look at linebacker, you know it's it's a group. It's the older group, so you expect more guys to come out of that group and make more plays. You know, with Hicks being down right now. But we, we have enough there at, at the backer position where we can rotate guys. Charlie, what are you seeing from your offensive guard? Do you have find two new starters there? Well, with the guard, you know, with the whole offensive line play, it, you know, it's, it's five guys. And when you have a center like Espinosa who sits there in the middle for you, you know, he's a guy who can make the checks for you and make the calls. So, you know, at, at the guard position, uh, the guys are rotating and, and we're still – you know, we're finding guys where we're putting guys in place, but still, though, it's, we have to get better. You know, with Perkins going down, it kind of hurt us because there was a guy who you could have looked at inside that guard with Harrison and Kennedy being outside. Coach, when, when guys aren't competing like you want to see them competing, what, what do you go do? Do you go say something to that guy right then, or how do you handle it? I stopped practice and we started over. <laughs> have you had to do it? Uh, uh, no, I, uh, you know, I, I stopped it and uh, I told him how, I, I told him how I felt about it. And so uh, today we kind of stopped and uh, we were stretching. So we, we, uh, I stopped stretch. I sent them back to the gate. Told them come back in with a different attitude. We have, I mean, obviously, we haven't been around you that long, but I, I can already feel you. Today's one has been a. It didn't seem like a good day. <laughs> Why? Because the way I'm standing here doing it. You know, but the, uh, uh, but do you think that something like that today, though, is just yet another example for these kids or the, the guys that, you know, hey, things are different, you know, expectations are different, everything is different. No, it isn't because anywhere I've been, you, you've had days like this. And, and as a coach, you want every day to come out where they come out and compete. And, and some days they're going to have days like this. They're going to have some days where they come out there today to, to where they come to punch the clock. And that's what you tell them each and every day. It's about us getting better. We're not good enough team to just go punch the clock. But you have days like this as, as anywhere. So not just because of uh, being here. and But, you know, it's just human nature. And, and uh, sometimes um, – you know, I told them they had uh, Sunday off, they had Monday off, so today I expected them to come out and really have a good day, which we did. What, what were they doing in the stretch, Charlie, that you just didn't like? You, you can always tell when your football team is ready to go practice. That's the way you can tell when they're ready to go play a game, just by their whole demeanor and, and how you stretch and how and they're not talking. They're kind of just kind of going through the motion. You can feel it. You can sense it. Coach, is everyone acclimated? I think Coach Payton is about to be acclimated to all of your expectations. For example, the walking back and forth from practice. You don't see anybody hesitating waiting for a bus to arrive. Right? Is that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I have all the guys acclimated to your expectations. Without any hesitation, like walking back and forth from practice. Well, we hadn't had any resentment. Of, well, they don't have no choice. They're going to walk back and forth to practice. I mean, what? I mean, what? What else are they going to do? <laughs> They're for sure not going to ride with anyone. But no, it's been a great group of guys. They've done everything we ask, and and. Uh, and and I, and I can say that you know there's, there's been uh, no one who has challenged us on anything we've asked of them. So and but that's when you feel like that you have a team that where it's important to them, where they understand it's important when they do everything you ask. Coach, do you, do you think that Cedric Reed has any attributes similar to Marshall Smith, and does he get used in any of the, any of the same kind of ways, or do you view them as completely kind of different players? Well, they're two different players. Marcus was a quarterback in high school who. Who uh, end up developing in, into a uh, you know a, a very athletic guy who could drop in in one of those guys that you could use in really different situations. He's athletic enough to go drop in the coverage, and then when you need to go rush him. Whereas Cedric is a bigger, stronger, physical guy and really strong at the point of attack where Marcus wasn't. So you're just looking at two different players. What have you seen out of, Dave, out of David Ash so far? You got to see him with a little live action. 
Well, Ash, the, the, you know, both quarterbacks, they, they're getting better. And uh, the, the thing about David is, is that, you know, he's studying it and, and he's working at it. And, and uh, each practice, I, I would say that about him, each practice he has gotten better and better. The circle drill. We circled up today. It was a really good drill. So what we it's a uh, I blow the whistle. So when I do that, it means circle up. So uh, the players really don't know the matchups. So I have a, a card in my hand and I, and I call out the matchups and and so it's a, I always be lineman against lineman. You know they probably you know one hand is here, another hand is here. They're they're close apart. Then they it's it's a fit drill. It's all about leverage and who can get leverage. Get your hands inside and, and you don't want to turk. You know some guys try to pull and. Just, and just, Throw a guy, which it's really good when a guy can just stay pad level and fit it up, and move a guy and just try to just press him back in, and put him on his back. What do you see from Quandre? Diggs. Uh, the thing I like about Quandre, he's coming into his own and 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 it's showing the leadership ability that I feel like he has. Uh, a guy can play uh, outside the corner floors, and then we can move him inside to the nickel position. A very smart football player. And it plays within himself. He knows that his size is, is not, you know, what you like to see all the time in that position. But he knows how good he is, and he plays within himself. Charlie, maybe mind games is the wrong term to use here. But when you send people back to the gate, when you get on people in practice, in a way, are you looking to see how they're reacting? See that kind of what's going on in their head at all? No, I, I, they know, I know how they react, and I just saw it. That's why I sent them back. And so it's, it's all about them changing once they come back. But it, it's no mind game. And I tell them, it's, uh, you, you know, you can sense a team when the team isn't ready to go play a game. You can sense a team when they're just coming out to practice and they don't feel like practice. You can, you can tell. I mean, it's just their whole demeanor and just how they carry themselves and how they act. And when, they just, when you're stretching, you don't hear nobody chattering. You don't hear anybody talking. They're just kind of just sitting there. But it is no conversation. You, you, you sit, and that's what we. And I saw that today. Charlie, it sounds like Dajé had a nice play in the scrimmage, and you know, like you said, he's a guy who can, he can boom or bust for you. What, what are you seeing in terms of his psyche, and how do you press the right buttons? Well, the, the thing about uh, uh, DJ, you know what? He has so much ability, and uh, and he's going to make the catches, and, and he has enough speed where he can run away from people. But it's all about ball security and just holding on to the football once you do make that big play. And, and uh, But I, I tell you what, the, the thing it does, though, when he does fumble or when he uh, drops a ball, it, it means something to him because you, you have to really go talk to him to get him to get back. Cause, uh, it, but – I, I tell him all the time, you just have to have a sharp memory, just like playing a defensive back. You need a sharp memory. You give up a big throw, you need to be able to bounce back. But he, he is talented. He's a guy that we need to get the ball in his hands because he will be. He's an exciting player. Coach, will, uh, will you get a chance to meet President Obama when he comes to the season? Well, uh, uh, you know what? I really hadn't had a chance to look at the rest of my schedule for next week. But it's uh, you know, you really have to. You had the president coming in. You had uh, uh, Bill Clinton, Jimmy Carter. President Bush, so it really has some really good speakers. Even, uh, you, you know, you look at uh, with uh, uh, Herm, uh, the uh, Herm Edward, uh, is it Edwards? Mm -hmm. Yes, but but you have uh, enough good speakers coming in that be here. Jim Brown, so it, it's some really powerful people. From your perspective, um, any any thoughts on the significance of, of having that event here, and maybe how would you explain that to some of your players who might not know all of the history? Well, you, you look at that's why I stand where I stand right now because of uh, the what went into that and the signing and the, the 50 years and you, you you think about it and just how far society have come and just how much people have changed and and we continue to change each and every day. Look at the president of the United States and, uh, with him being who he is right now and being elected to that position where we would never thought that many years ago. Never would have thought I'd be standing here many years ago. But there's a lot of people that have poured a lot of work into it, and, and now you see the change. And it will continue to change. We know we still have a ways to go, but, it, you know, when you see justice and you see good things happen, then you know, you know that there, there are many people that is really important too. Would you say your defense is <clears throat> ahead of the offense? I, I don't think right now anyone's ahead of any, anyone because uh, I, you know, you look at offensively. We, we took the ball down the field and were able to move it and drive it on the defense, and the defense uh, made some plays that they were able to stop the offense. But you, you still look at um, 
Uh, it, it's still right now. I wouldn't say that no one group is head and shoulders above the other group. What did you see from your tight ends? Tight ends? Well, you, you look at you look at Swain McFarland, and uh, you know they're getting better. Uh, they made some catches, you know, the tight because the tight end position is an important part of our offense. So they're gonna be we're gonna be able to throw in the ball and they make some catches. And how about Blake? Uh, Blake did a good job, also. Yes. So did, you, did you happen to notice Johnny Manziel included you on an Instagram post? Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> well, you know what happens? I was taking a picture with a young man from Arkansas, from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. So he said, Coach, take this picture with me. This is an Arkansas thing. And I said, what is it? He said, he had his hand. If you remember, he said as his hand was doing that. And he said, well, catch it. And so his friend was taking the picture. So I don't, you know. <laughs> 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 Coach, saw you lead late night, Saturday night. How many hours are you putting into this thing early on? What's <laughs> I don't know. I, <laughs> late night Saturday. I, it was after the basketball game, wasn't it? Or in the swim meet. <laughs> but yes. But um, I don't ever think about the hours. I just put in the amount of time I need to put in at the end of the day to get it all done. So it, it's not the hours. It's because I, I get enough sleep. It's all about us making sure that you know. And I tell our coaching staff all the time: you don't have to sit here because I'm here. If you need to go, you can go. Uh, because I'm going to sit here and do what I need to finish getting uh, done. Along those lines, do you feel ahead, behind, kind of right on track where you want to be right now? You're well, April 1st? Well, you like to say you're right on track of where you need to be, and you still have practices left to go, and, and which is good. The personality of this team, Charlie, you see it coming together, is it light years away? How would you describe it? Well, it isn't like years away. It's it's still about leadership, and it's still about the seniors providing the leadership and and the personalities there. We just got to be able to just get it all to gel and get them all to come together. Big Twelve uh, schools start their spring games this week, Coach. Uh, Baylor and TCU. Do you, do you and your staff even you think about seeing those games and checking them out to get an idea of uh, you know like Baylor? They they got the title belt around. No, you don't worry, worry about those teams because we have so many issues here right now. I can only, you know, I can only worry about my team. It's, it's spring ball, so I, I can only, you know, hope that I can continue to get fundamentals and technique and improve each and every day. You have time for two last ones. Era was one of the best in the country last year. Can you feel about Jim? Can you happy with where that stuff is on special teams? No, we had a chance to kick on Saturday, and eat, and we'll kick field goals now. So we we will continue. You know, you got enough kickers that are sitting there. So you know, you look at uh, uh, guys that Rose and Jordan got both guys that have a chance to go and compete and battle for it. But you know, they're gonna get an opportunity to go kick each and every day. Charlie, when you look at uh, Marcus Johnson's skill set, what, what do you see him bring to the table? And also, he's a kid that even going back to high school, his coach was always praising him for his work ethic. Have you noticed that part of him? Uh, Marcus does a great job, and, and I say this, he can run. I know that he can separate from a defensive back. And it's it all about him with just confidence and just continue to just work on his confidence. And, and what I told Marcus, I said, you have big time ability. You need to go play like that each and every day.